Hey guys, and welcome back to Ultra Game World. And today, we are looking at the Gigabyte B450 Aorus Elite motherboard. So this motherboard is on the B450 chipset and is AM4 compatible. So all your Ryzen uh, chips, all the way from the 1000 series, all the way potentially up to the 5000 series are supported on this motherboard. Now, I'm not exactly sure the BIOS revision, but you might need to update your BIOS for 5000 series CPUs. But out of the box, as we can see here, it is AMD Ryzen 3000 series ready. So you can put anything up to a 3950X, perfectly fine without updating the BIOS. But if you need to update the BIOS, please be aware, obviously. So let's take a little look at this motherboard. Um, it's obviously in ATX format. It's, it's quite a sort of premium motherboard, but I didn't get I didn't didn't actually pay a premium price. Thankfully, I actually only paid about thirty five pounds for this because Amazon had a used discount on this, um, and then I used like a little code and what have you just to get it a little bit cheaper. So I got this for thirty five pounds, and I'm really happy with that because I think that's a really good price for a, a good sort of more premium B four fifty ATX board. So I think that's actually a good that's a that's a good deal for me. Now let's look at sort of the the marketing specs as we can see here. Quite a good uh, quite a good I/O array. I'll, I'll get onto that as we uh, unbox the motherboard. Um, good VRMs. It also has a um, permanently attached IO so it's actually the the IO doesn't it doesn't need a separate IO shield it's permanently on which is really nice it's got m.2 heatsink here i think it's got two m.2 slots yeah that's right so really everything that you kind of need or, or like the ARGB and everything as well does look a really nice motherboard so without uh, further ado let's crack on with the unboxing Here we go with the unboxing. As you can see here, motherboard on top, which is nice. Yep, you can see that. I'll also switch to the other camera just in case. I'm just using the side camera at the moment, so I'm just going to experiment, see if that's good or not. If you can, drop me a like or obviously comment on what you think overall to the side camera i would like to know your views do you, do you think that's a nice little angle there or are you not really bothered about that I, i'm just thinking maybe to uh mix things up a little bit so anyway that that was the mod board i've just taken that out uh we have two sata port sata cables here uh they actually have been opened but this is a used deal so it has been used before so i kind of accept that the Aorus Elite manual, which is really nice. A little Aorus Elite badge, so you can just stick that to your computer case, that's nice. Beer coaster, standard. And a multilingual installation guide. So, not a lot really happening there. There's no M.2 screws, but I'm hoping the, yeah, I think the M.2 is actually screwed on there, so we won't actually need those. But without further ado, let's get onto the motherboard. here we go so initially first impressions it looks really good i mean this is a used board obviously so you will have to take in effect this the uh ram slots are actually open here which i'm not really sure why so i'm just going to close them probably the previous person who used this you know uh didn't close them but anyway <laughs> moving on yeah as i as i said a permanent io shield which integrated io shield whatever you want to call it so i think that's really good especially nowadays i mean I want to be seeing more motherboards with the uh, integrated I.O. shield. I think that's just so much better idea because there's so many people who just even forget their I.O. shield to put it in. And here where it's in it, you just slot the motherboard straight in and don't even think about it. So that's nice. As you can see here, plenty of cooling, which is really nice. We have what looks like a six by potentially five phase, but I could be wrong there and I'll, I'll put it below if not. Um, so I think the VRM should be perfectly fine. So I, I would certainly say if you want to go into the 5000 series on this motherboard, then I'd certainly go for it. I think anything up to about 5800X would be perfectly fine. I think 
if you're going up to 5900 and 5950x you can afford the extra to get a even more premium board than this but this when it was released this was like a premium board this was like the top tier b450 so you know to get this for so cheap really i know obviously b450 is a little bit of an older platform now so you do have to bear that in mind but i think overall i'm willing to take a little bit of a cheaper deal is you know i like a good deal and i like to put pcs together for cheap so hopefully you do as well um, as we can see our AMD socket it's uh, got the brackets there and it's got the uh, mounting underneath it which is nice not really much happening underneath the motherboard but that is what it is four dim slots not exactly sure the total amount of RAM but I think something like 128 gigabytes could be fitted in here so obviously four is pretty much what you want nowadays um, pretty much standard with all motherboards um, let's look at the system fans. So we have one, two, uh, CPU as well, and then three. Okay, so it looks like we've only got three system fans. It's a little bit disappointing on a premium ATX motherboard. I would like to see, really, I would like to see four. I'm just checking the board to make sure that we don't have another, another one. No, I can't see another one. Um, obviously, you've got the CPU fan with the free system fan. So I think overall that's that's okay. That's not too bad. Um, we have the addressable RGB up here. We have um, two SATA ports here, which obviously aren't covering the graphics card, which is nice. And then two SATA ports just here. And then just another two at the bottom as well. So you've got six SATA ports, so plenty of expandability if you are going to go down the whole hard drives or even SSD route. Um, the front I.O. is actually labelled and, and, and coloured, which is nice. So that will be nice and easy when you're putting your connectors in. A USB free um, connection at the bottom there, so that's nice. Yeah, you can't actually quite see that on camera, but um, but yeah, uh, so USB 3, that's nice. Uh, we have two USB 2s, which is nice, the TPM module, and some COM module, which I'm not really sure that well, that's for. The TPM, obviously, that is uh, more used for like Windows 11 now, but I think this mobile should be perfectly fine for Windows 11, but not 100% sure on that. So we have a 12 volt RGB and then the addressable rgb as well so we've got two addressable rgb ports which i think is probably enough again i, I would like to see really on an atx board i would like to see four or even five system fans and potentially even three argb connections now because i just think that we're going you know more and more cases are like argb and what have you so yeah i think um it's a little bit disappointing for a premium board but overall overall i think it's perfectly fine we have a heat sink on the M.2, which is the main one, which is obviously where you're going to put your main NVMe drive. Um, obviously, you can put a M.2 SATA as well if you want to. And then we have another M.2 drive here. Um, so two on an ATX, I think, is acceptable. We have seen three um, more commonly, um, sort of more on the more premium boards, I guess. But I think two, perfectly fine. It's only beef. 450 chipset obviously as well so there is probably limitations on the chipset side of what we can have and i missed out that we have an led cpu header as well so if you've got one of like the wraith um prism ones which are like the leds where it has leds on the top here so on your cpu cooler so you can plug that into there which is obviously nice if you have one of those cpu coolers and then just your standard 8 pin CPU connection and your 24 pin motherboard connection as well for your power and I think that pretty much wraps that up um, the only other thing is your PCI Express times 16 slot here and then I believe that's a times 8 slot here but a little bit low and then you only have one other uh, one time slot for your PCIe here so 
Oh no, sorry, you do have another one on top of the uh, graphics card, just, just before the graphics card. So only four PCI kind of expansion ports, which I think in nowadays is perfectly fine. I mean, probably at most you're going to have a Wi-Fi Bluetooth card at the bottom one, I would say, and then your graphics card, and you're probably not going to need any more than that. And obviously things like SLI and what have you, is all that's all kind of times past i wouldn't worry about that so i think that pretty much wraps up that side of the motherboard and we'll just have a look at the io now so i'll, I'll give you close-ups of this obviously as, as well as we go along but just just talking from here from the io side obviously this is an integrated io shield i've said that before but here we go with the um port so we have two usb 2s another two usb 2s here and four usb 3.0 ports which eight ports on a ATX board, I think it's really good. And I'm really happy about that. And more motherboards should, more motherboard manufacturers should go down this route of putting at least eight USB ports now. I'd, I would actually like to see 10 personally, because I just think more and more things are USB now. Although I do understand USB-C now is coming in. So probably it'd be nice to see a USB-C port, but I'm not really too bothered about USB-C at the moment. I still think usb sort of 3.0 is kind of what you want for your ports but yeah eight, eight usb ports pretty happy with that P the ps2 port don't really want to see them anymore I, I kind of feel we're phased out of that now uh personally but it's there if you really need it um a dvi port again this is kind of a bit of a ancient port now in modern days i mean display port and your hdmi is kind of where we're going now so i'd kind of like to see a display port there really or even potentially more usbs or something but anyway just dvi and then we have a hdmi port here as well your gigabit lan which is pretty much standard and quite a decent array of audio jacks here um so i think that can pretty much can do like 7.1 surround sound if you really wanted to but overall, a decent I.O. I think nothing amazing, but it's perfectly adequate for a, a, for a decent B450 ATX board, I think. So that wraps it up for this overview, really, of the B450 Gigabyte Aorus Elite motherboard. Now, I am going to have a build of this coming up. I think I'm going to use a 1600 AF with 16 gigabytes of RAM and probably my RX 584 gigabyte uh, graphics card so I think that'll be a nice little build I'll put together and I've actually if you want a little sneak preview if you've stayed to this far in the video I've actually just brought a Corsair 220T airflow RGB case for only £45 so that's going to come up in a few weeks and so obviously hit that little subscribe button at the bottom there to make sure you're notified and also if you can just hit the bell as well that would also give you the notifi notifications a little bit quicker so you don't miss any of my videos coming up now i hope you like that little overview on this motherboard i haven't really gone too far in in, in depth with everything and um, this is more just a general overview of the board i think my initial impressions are great board it looks really nice it's got all the modern features you need. You can go right up to Ryzen 5000 series if you update the BIOS as well. And I just think, yeah, I'm really happy with 35 pounds. It's you know, it, it's gonna it ticks all the boxes for me, and I'm really looking forward to putting a nice, sweet build in here. So, yeah, um, I hope you like this, guys. Drop us a like, comment on would you buy this board or would you? just go B550 now and not even consider B450 anymore just let me know hope you like this video guys and I will see you in the next one bye guys